The ninth ranked Sun Devil women's water polo team will return home to Tempe this week and face yet another highly ranked, nationally ranked conference opponent as the number two Cal Golden Bears will take on ASU this Saturday, March 30th at the Mona Plummer Aquatic Center on campus. Joining us this week to discuss her 2024 Sun Devil squad is a woman who was a one-time All-American at Arizona State and now is in her second full season as the head coach at her alma mater. We welcome Coach Petra Party to the show. Petra, it's great to see you. How you been? Good to see you as well. Thank you for having me. I'm excited Th to be here. Thanks for joining us. Let's start, why don't we, by looking back at last week, a 15 to 10 win at 17th ranked San Jose State. And then you uh, go up the road to Stanford and come oh so close to knocking off the number four team in the country and the two-time defending national champ, a 10-9 to thriller. Reflect back on those two matches. Uh, we had a good weekend as a team, both in and out of the water. A lot of team bonding was done on the road. Uh, this group of kids is, I will say, I'm not allowed to say it, it's probably about my favorite group I've, I've ever got to be around and be a favorite team that I've got to be a part of uh, since my time here at ASU. It's a, it's a very special group uh, as far as, as chemistry and friendships outside of the water. As far as the games this weekend, you know, we went into San Jose um, fairly confident that mm -hmm. it's a must-win game for us. We got to play our entire bench, um, you know, also to allow for some, some rest for our starting line going into Sunday's game against Stanford. We came out a little too slow uh, in the first quarter. We were in a two-goal deficit by the end of it. Uh, if, I, if we were able to take that out, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it was a great game for us otherwise. And um, we lost by one goal. We were, we were really close to tie, being able to tie it up and push the game into overtime. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. But uh, I think sometimes, Growing part of the growth process and, and growing as a program is you have to be this close and feel the loss and to, f to feel the anger and to realize that it's the small nuances, the one missed field block, the one missed shot opportunity, the, the one miscommunication on defense is what ultimately wins, win, wins and losses will, mm -hmm. will hang on that. Mm -hmm. So I think having as young of a squad as we have this year uh, as tough as that loss is, I think uh, it's a good lesson to learn for the rest of, you know, moving forward and the intensity that we need to have at practices to, to close yeah. that very, very small gap that we have. In that vein, uh, the fact that you lose by one goal to the program that, as we said, has won the last two national titles. In fact, as we were chatting before going on the air, ch check this fact out. In this century, all of the NCAA Women's Water Polo National Championships have been won by three programs, and all three are conference foes of Arizona State, Stanford, UCLA, and USC. And the fact that you are within one goal of defeating a team like Stanford, what does that say, Petra, about where your program is right now? I think we're headed uh, definitely towards the right direction. Uh, we have the right people here to build a program, to lay the foundation of a program that is able to challenge, you know, and break into these three teams to be the fourth who wins a national championship. Uh, we have to start at winning conference first because essentially our conference championship is pretty much the same as mm -hmm. uh, NCAA championship. Um, so I, I think we are definitely on the right trajectory. We're continuing to, to recruit strong athletes, but also great people. Uh, so I'm, I'm very optimistic to where we're headed. And in that vein as well, uh, the win at San Jose State was Arizona State's 20th of the season, the Sun Devils record as we tape today's show, 25-1. and one. It's the first 20-win season since 2017 and the seventh in program history. And this being your second full year as a head coach, I'm wondering how do you feel you've grown as a coach this year? And talk a little bit about the type of culture that you're trying to build within your program. Uh, you nailed it. I think we realized when we came in as a brand new staff that the most important thing for us early on was establishing the right team culture. And you know, with the staff change, it was a perfect time for a, for a reset. So, you know, I think in, with today's student athletes, it's, the relationships are, are very important. So we spend a lot of time outside of the water uh, with mental health, um, mental strength, mental performance coaches as a team uh, talking about the relationships and, and trust first and foremost that we have to have for each other in and out of the water. 
so we lay a foundation on that mm -hmm. and then everything else grows from there. Um, we have a team rule, you know, that we shake each other's hands every morning when we see each other for the first time and that's mm -hmm. our symbolic checking in with each other. We are here to push each other, to compete with each other, uh, to make each other better and at the end of practice when everybody's getting out of the water, we shake each other's hand again and it's like awesome. all, all the things that were said were in order to, to push you and make you better and now that's done, now, we're, now we can go get a coffee. Sean Cressman, maybe we ought to start doing that, shaking hands more often <laughs> at the start of every day. That might, that might help us as well. Hey, there have been a lot of outstanding players, you included, uh, that have come through this program, but uh, I'm not sure there are many as good as the young lady we're going to meet a little later on in this show and your star attacker, Lutza Potovery. Right. She is the all-time leading goal scorer. I think she has the the school records for most goals in a game, most goals in a season, and uh, most goals in a career. Talk about her and what she's meant to your program. Uh, she's incredible. Uh, she's an amazing player. She's always been an outstanding attacker and shooter, especially from a young age. And, and that's kind of how we recognized her and saw her early on when she was uh, recruit as soon as she became recruiting eligible. Uh, you know, we were on the phone with her and just her ability to execute in, in close games and in tough situations is, is unparalleled. Uh, she has a completely different mindset. She just always wants the ball in her hand. But all the opponents at this point know that she is the one to look mm -hmm. out for. And so now we've been moving her a lot more on the perimeter. She's an excellent driver. I would argue that she has the best move, like the quick move to get in front of a defender in the entire NCAA. Uh, as we sit here and she's just great like she she would go and drive to create space for everyone else around her and somehow the ball still still finds her and <laughs> she's still the one to to finish yep. with three people on her back uh, a big part of that I will have to say is Lara Kish um, she is I will say the smartest um, player we have in the water in the sense and Lara and Lutza they're both from Hungary they yeah. grew up together they've played water polo together for I will say eight years at this point on various uh, junior and youth national teams and then here at ASU so the connection they have in the water I think they would find each other with their eyes closed so um, <laughs> the, the two of them go hand in hand and they both contribute to Lutza's ultimate success. It's almost like Lutza and Lara don't need that daily handshake they've known each other <laughs> yes. for, for time immemorial yes, right? Yes going all the way back to Hungary. And the interesting thing is you have another pair of players, sophomores, your second and third leading goal scorers, Millie Quinn and Sophie Shorter Robinson. They both come from yes. Auckland, New Zealand yes. and have been playing since uh, they were toddlers, right? Yes, they grew up playing water polo together on the club level and on the high school level on the national team uh, pipeline for New Zealand as well and now here at ASU. So uh, same, can same goes for their connection in the water. Um, and it just goes to, to just to go back to our conversation from earlier, the trust, why trust and team chemistry is so important because in tough situations, uh, that's what we can fall back onto. Mm -hmm. And in addition to those experienced players, you have a large number of freshmen yes. on this year's team. How are the freshmen developing and how do you envision the future of your program as these young players develop? Uh, like you said, we uh, have a massive freshman class. We started the year with 10 freshmen. Uh, and we, you know, part of us being a new staff and establishing a new culture. Another thing that we were very focused on is uh, player development, developing individual athletes. And so we put in a lot of work in the off season, you know, growing each individual athlete and giving them the confidence that when season time comes and we play against the big opponents like Stanford's and UCLA's and USC's of the world, they are going to be ready and they are capable. Mm -hmm. And so far, they've, they've stepped up a lot. Uh, obviously, a lot of freshman mistakes are being made, but yeah. it's, it's part of the learning curve that they have to make those mistakes themselves in the real game in order to like, really learn from it rather than sitting on the bench and watching somebody else make the mistakes and then we'll watch it mm -hmm. back on video. So we give them opportunities to make the mistakes and learn from them themselves. Now, all the players we've discussed today, Lutza, uh, Laura Kish, uh, Sophie, and uh, uh, Millie Quinn, all of them, uh, are among your international group of players. By my count, you have 10 players on your team from outside the United States. Yes. Talk about the significance, the importance, the need, I guess, to recruit internationally in your sport. Um, the answer is twofold. Uh, one, because a vast majority of the, vast majority of the U.S. Um, youth national team pipeline 
you know, they have their sights set on USC, Stanford, and UCLA. So they prefer to go uh, in-state, go to California, go to those top programs. So we have to supplement with the international talent to be, to be able to uh, match, uh, you know, the talent on the roster overall. Uh, and the other part of the answer is I am also a byproduct of sure. um, and a beneficiary of international recruiting. And I know how life-changing it was for me, um, how quickly I felt uh, bought into everything Sun Devil Athletics, how it changed not only my life, but the rest of my family's life and the small community around me. Um, and I think we are in college, collegiate athletics because of individual you know, development and personal betterment. And I think being part of an international community betters all of us. Of course, everybody in Sun Devil Nation knows that Arizona State University Athletics is about ready to transition into the Big 12 Conference uh, later this summer. And yet, uh, Arizona State Water Polo, currently a member of the Mountain Pacific Sports Federation, and Petra, your sport will remain in the Mountain Pacific yes. Sports Federation, yes? Yes, we will. Um, it's a, the strongest conference to be a part of. Um, the top five teams in the country are in our conference. So we play against the best opponents each weekend. I think it makes us better. I think better, better competition uh, makes us as a program and us as individual players better because there's never a weekend where we can just relax and and say, oh, it's, it's going to be an easy one. It's never going to be an easy one. <laughs> yeah. So we have to push every day. What will it take, to, speaking of never easy ones, what will it take to take down number two Cal this Saturday? A lot. Everything we got. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are on it. Uh, you know, a lot of the conversations we had at this morning's practice is about that. Uh, how, you know, for the outside world, outside of the 20 of us, it seems like, oh, it's a, you know, we were one goal away from taking down Stanford. And to us, mm -hmm. it really stings because it was really just one missed field block. It was just uh, one missed shot opportunity. So I think it, it gives us a lot of fuel and fire going into uh, our matchup against Cal this upcoming weekend to, to really pick up the intensity and just to be that much more dialed in. And as I understand it, it's actually, you have two matches, don't you, on Saturday against yes. Ottawa University Ottawa of University Arizona at, at 3 p.m.? Uh, yes, exactly. Ottawa University uh, of Arizona at 3 p.m. right after. Uh, my mindset is, is first sure. first things first, sure. let's focus on Cal and then we'll refocus again for, for the 3 p.m. matchup. And especially with the Mountain Pacific Sports Federation tournament coming up a month from now, April 26th through the 28th in Bloomington, Indiana. Why Bloomington, Indiana? Well, Indiana University is a member of the Mountain Pacific Sports Federation, but with the tournament coming up, I'd imagine every conference match so critical right now. Every single one, uh, I will argue. Now that you know, we talked about this against Stanford, if we could erase the first quarter, uh, it would have been a completely different outcome. So to me, every quarter matters just as much. Again, it will be a huge day in the pool at the Mona Plummer Aquatic Center this Saturday, March 30th, 12 noon, ASU, the number nine team in the country and number two ranked California in water polo and then the Sun Devils will turn right around and take on Ottawa University of Arizona at 3 p.m. on Saturday afternoon. Petra, so great to have you on the show. Best Thank of luck you. to you this weekend and the rest of the season. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. That's Sun Devil head water polo coach Petra Party, our guest on this segment of Sun Devil Extra. Coming up in the final segment of this week's show, you will meet the star of Petra's ASU team, the all-time goal-scoring leader in Arizona State history. We will visit with Lutza Potovary, after this timeout, this is Sun Devil Extra from the Mountain America Credit Union Sun Devil Radio Network.